my name is João Andres Antunes. I'm a software developer at Miniclip. I work in a mobile version of a game that maybe you heard about called Agario. And um, so this is my talk. Uh, big title, From Zero to Hero, Lessons from My Struggle to Find My Spot in the Industry. And so this was me some years ago. And maybe this is you now. And um, I am sure it was all of you at some point in your life. And I was lost. I didn't know how to start making video games. I don't know uh, where to go. I didn't know who to talk to. And I didn't know what to do. And so where was I? Four years ago, I was in Warsaw. And um, I was doing my Erasmus there. And uh, well, I thought it was just about like uh, getting drunk and going for parties. But apparently, I had to attend classes. And, um, and I was uh, placed in some university where um, all the classes were in Polish. And so I had to add individual classes. And this was the best thing that happened to me because I was having video game art classes, which, well, I'm not an artist, but I was having video game art class, uh, classes with uh, Sebastian Novak, which is a lead game artist in uh, CD Projekt. At the time, he was a lead environment artist in uh, The Witcher 3, and right now he's a lead vehicle artist in, um, in Cyberpunk, because what he loves is actually making cars, not making games. Um, and, uh, and so Sebastian was, um, was uh, teaching me how to use uh, Unreal, how to set up scenes in Unreal, and how to, how to make 3D models in Maya. And, um, but but, but he w while he was doing this, he was sh uh, showing me some assets that he did for some other games, and things that he did as a freelance before he joined CD Projekt. And, and I, I started getting interested, like, uh, but how is it? Like, how can you make a, a, a living out of video games? And I don't know, like, uh, at the time, I made this uh, amazing realization that if I know how to program, and if I love video games, I can be a video game programmer. Like, I don't know, like, it, it, it took me, it took me uh, 24 years or something to realize this, which is absolutely obvious. And wow, I know what to do, what I want to do for the rest of my life. But um, there was a problem. So I was there in Marso, and then I had to come back in, to Lisbon because, uh, unfortunately, Erasmus uh, ends. And uh, I had some problems. I never made a game in my life. I don't know anyone else who makes games. And are there even st studios where I live? Like, uh, can, can I work in, in video games? And, the, and so I made this association. Well, if I don't know how to make video games, what I will do is uh, I will get myself employed in the video game studio, and uh, I will learn there. And so I started researching uh, some studios, and uh, I started applying to some. And then uh, uh, I got to this. Um, I, I saw that there was like a really big studio in Lisbon, which was Miniclip. And so I applied to Miniclip, and I did all the tests. And I did everything, and uh, I think they, they, they liked me, and I liked them, and I did the code test, and I failed miserably, and I didn't get in. Um, and so this is where I am again. Back to square one. I don't know how to start, I don't know who to talk to, I don't know where to go, and I don't know what to do. And so uh, at the time, I had to, to stop, and I had, I had to assert my situation. I, I need to come up with a plan. And I, I came up with a really simple plan that I, I thought that uh, will uh, allow me to finally uh, find my place um, in the industry and allow me to make games. So I will get a programming job even if not in games. It, it was uh, really apparent from my, from my code testing that I wasn't ready to work at Miniclip. Um, and, and this comes from um, basically I was doing my masters and during my whole masters, although I was uh, it was informatics, but I wasn't programming that much. It's it's kind of strange and. Uh, and I always, uh, whenever there was like group works, I, al I would always uh, prefer to do things on my own. And so it means that you're not exactly sharing code with others. You're not looking at code quality. And it's uh, something really important, uh, especially when you are working in big studios. So I defined that, uh, well, I just want to find a programming job. I want to learn as much as possible because, well, I didn't know much. And I want to make games on my spare time because my, my portfolio, um, it's not that it was not existent because I did some stuff at, uh, at uh, uh, university, but well, it wasn't the games that I wanted to showcase to people, and it wasn't that impressive. And so I started searching online, like, how, how do I go about this? How, how do I find um, other people? Like, and how do I get this plan into action? 
And um, I started searching on Facebook, and I, I find the Facebook page of uh, this association, which is called uh, Ludoteca. At the time, it, it had a, a different logo. But, um, and, and basically, they, they, were, um, they were sharing some event that was going to happen, some game dev meet or whatever there is. And, um, and I see, OK, like this is, um, this is a gathering for people who make games. I don't exactly make games. Like, should, should I go or, or not? Like, how does, it, how does this work? And, uh, and I talk with, uh, with some people, and they say, no, you can go. Like, it's, um, it's open for everybody. And so I go. And, um, and, uh, and for me, it's, it was really eye-opening, because I see other people who are making games, people who showcase games, people who, who are employed, or, or like they're just making it as an hobby, but, but people that share this interest of uh, creating video games. And so um, also in my, in my first game, Dave Mita, I already started talking with people and sharing like, my, my concerns that, that uh, well, I don't know how to start. I don't know what to do, all these questions that I had. And um, what should I do? Should I, should I go to some, some uh, video game design course or something like that? Or sh what can I do? And so eventually, I get employed in some consultancy company doing uh, uh, websites and mobile apps, uh, so n nothing like game related. And, um, and I also uh, joined some uh, video, game, um, video game design uh, classes. And so basically, I do, I'm at work. And um, at night, uh, I'm with other people learning how to make video games. And as I wanted to create games on my spare time, sometimes I am uh, at uh, game jams. I'm, I'm this one with the bottle of alcohol. And, um, and yeah, and, and what, what I start realizing, like I'm, I'm tackling these uh, three uh, key points that I wanted to do. So to learn to make, uh, to make games and uh, to get employed, like I'm doing all of this. And this is where I was. But suddenly, there's others like me around me. And maybe everybody's lost, but at least we are lost together. And we are doing something, and we are finding each other. And, um, and we have like this uh, uh, shared um, interest in what we are uh, trying to do, and they are learning with each other. And so this goes on for like six months, uh, where I'm developing more and more games. I'm participating more and more game jams. I'm going to the, to the, to the classes. I'm working, and Miniclip take two. So basically, when you fail at, um, at Miniclip, it's not the last opportunity. You can try, I think, six months after. And this was like one year after. So we're talking like uh, uh, three years ago, not even three years ago, two and a half years ago. And, um, and I try again. Process, and I do everything, and I do my code test, which, well, I learned what, uh, what I did wrong before, which was basically everything. And um, well, the game was good, and it worked. The memory management was good. The, the code was atrocious. And uh, yes, I got the job, and I'm finally a game developer. It's like uh, everything I always wanted, and it's done. And this is uh, this is the talk. And no, it's not. Uh, because what I realized after is that this was really just the beginning. Because OK, I'm employed, but, but it doesn't really fulfill everything. Like there's there's um, there's other things, and it got me thinking. Like if I got here, it was there was a reason for it, and it's, it's it wasn't just hard work. There was other people that were around me and allowed me for this to happen. And so I realized that uh, well, I had to go even further. And so I, I, I was attending all these events, and I started organizing my own uh, my own community events, like game jams, and uh, and uh, helping others organize theirs. Because that's the best thing you can do is like to share this knowledge how to, on how to do stuff, and uh, if we all help each other out, there's more stuff. The same game dev meets that were so important for me in the beginning, and that it was like my my first connection with the with the community. I'm now one of the responsible people for organizing the game dev meets in Lisbon. I found others to share the dream with. This is the oh, part of the talk. So uh, it's important that even if you have a community and everybody's really understanding, it's important to to find that like, this. Uh, these people who are as crazy as you are, because because um, you will have your strong. You know this thing that they say like you are such soulmates that you start a sentence and they finish like but yeah but this is different like you start a game and they finish, and um, and yeah so I got uh, I made a lot of uh, projects with these uh, three losers next to me, which are like sitting somewhere, um, and I I. I Collaborated and uh, or created over, uh, around 20 games. It's just 12 if you count because the 20 didn't fit the frame that well. 
But uh, yeah, the two first ones, uh, Agario and Mini Militia, I, uh, I worked on uh, professionally. And all the others are, are game jam games. And, and, and um, important part of this, and this is why I say that it's important to, to do games on the side, is that you have uh, more artistic games here. You have uh, multiplayer games, you have 2D games, you have 3D games, uh, and uh, uh, you have rhythm games. And, uh, and um, the fact that you keep doing this kind of stuff will, uh, will help you learn more and more like, about uh, your capabilities. And I started giving talks to, to some universities and private uh, companies who shared a, li a little bit of the knowledge that I, that I had. Here I'm talking to Nosh, like about 5G in gaming or something like that. And, um, and I, I just recently got nominated for a Portuguese PlayStation Award. Here I am with David, it's 4 a.m. We are programming in a car because we were basically programming from 5 p.m. till 2 a.m. We were kicked out of the bar where we were, and we, then we went till 4 a.m. So yeah, some nights are like this. And so uh, what I can say is like, it's my talks like this, from zero to hero. So I got from zero to this lame ass Spider-Man, because I'm still not the hero that I want to be, but uh, well, I'm getting there, right? So I'm this, this first spot, I have a coolish suit, and I know how to do some tricks, but I'm, yeah. And so yeah, this talk is uh, so far, uh, and most of it is sort of me this, me that, I did this, I did the, the other thing. But what this talk is really about is about the, um, this community that enabled me to do all this and the uh, behaviors uh, from people that I mimicked. Because some things come from me, but most things come from, uh, from watching others and understanding, okay, these are the things that people are doing so that and, and they can make it work, so maybe I, I, I can do the same. And so I have some important lessons and guidelines that I think um, that I think you can apply uh, if you are starting, or I think at any point. Be aggressive in the pursuit of your goal, but work with others to achieve it. There's no point like in uh, uh, if if you have a, a goal, if you have an objective, and if, but if you you are willing to hurt others in the process, there's nothing for it. And 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 especially like if you find others that that share the same goal as you and you can and you can share the victories and the defeats with them, things get much easier. Be as eager to learn as you are to teach, or in other words, be as eager to listen as you are to talk. Like a lot of people spend the time talking a lot, they don't listen. And uh, and what I found when I, when I for, went to for to, for my first uh, game dev meet is that people were willing to listen to me, and they had a lot of advice to give. But it wasn't a one-way direction. Never stop experimenting and building up your portfolio. For all the reasons I said before, you can um, you can be uh, doing uh, whatever you are doing professionally, and you are doing like uh, racing games. But you can be doing an FPS at home, and maybe this will be important uh, at some point in the future. You never know like where your company is going or, or what opportunities may arise. Um, and um, this is also like. Um, what I see from others here, but uh, some people say like they prefer to have the eight hours doing stuff. They go home, they do some other thing. It's okay. It depends on you. Try to measure how much how much others gave you and, and try to give at least twice. I think this like this does this applies to life. And um, I, I was uh, I'm only able to to be to be speaking here to you guys because others gave to me. And so minimum I can do is to give back to you. And if we create this like uh, positivity uh, cycle. Only good things can come from it. And last but not least, like when things get rough, it's okay to ask for help. It's um, creating games is um, it's a creative process, and I think in all creative process there will be self-imposed crunch, there will be um, frustrations, and um, and sometimes things get rough. And even if you think you are like the like the superhero that you are aiming to be, um, well. Know that other people are there, know that other people understand you, and other people uh, have the same struggles in, as you and can help you out. And this is basically the last, um, last lesson, last, guide, last guideline that I will share with you guys, which, uh, well, this is me now. And I already know how to start, I just don't know how to keep going. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to, to talk to. I don't know what to do. And I think I will always feel like this because there will never be this point that you get that, well, it's done, like I reached the end goal. And, um, and so the, one of the biggest lessons I also taught, I actually taught myself, which is the lesson of like, sometimes you need to stop and you need to assert your situation and you, make, and you need to make up a plan. 
And so this is what I call my forever plan, which, well, things are, nothing is forever, right? But right now, I just grabbed my, my initial plan. Well, I don't need a programming job, like even if not games anymore. Like I'm employed in games. I want to keep uh, uh, doing what I do. So I want my, uh, my, what I do professionally to be amazing. I want to try, not just try to learn as much as possible, try to learn and teach as much, as much as possible for all the reasons I already talked. And I still want to make games on my spare time because I want to keep experimenting. Like, and whatever uh, I do professionally, well, it has a part of me, but it has a part of a lot of people. And sometimes you need like some creative outlet or something where you, you just put yourself in there and that you can, uh, and you can show it to someone else. And this is basically my talk. It's short and hope you guys enjoy it. So now we have time for uh, for Q and A. Or I would invite you guys. Like this, this is how I see, um, how, how I basically recouped for a loss, a, lo a lot of uh, wasted time because because I didn't knew. Like some of you guys, like uh, you already are getting out of high school and you know that you want to make video games. I didn't. It just came to me after. So this is how I recouped for the, that wasted time, and uh, and what I did for it for um, to quickly be in a position that I can that I'm comfortable in the industry but if you guys had uh, some other experience or if you have some other concerns I would love to hear them out or questions I'll start I guess. <laughs> uh, so you talk about where you started off where you feel like you are right now and you didn't really talk about how you picture yourself as a hero in this metaphor in your head, how do you picture yourself in like something similar to an end goal? Where do like you picture yourself in like ten years? Mm, yeah, uh, that, that's the thing. I think like uh, you have to try to go from zero to hero. But it's like this thing that you are going, you're going, you're going, but you never reach it. Like I think you always need to picture yourself like uh, you're getting there, but you're never quite there. Because the moment that you decide that well, it's done, then what else is there? This is how we see things. I think it's more like you're climbing a mountain, and when you get to the peak, you see another taller mountain. Yeah. When you're climbing, you're still thinking about that peak. So what is that peak for you right now? The, um, I'm quite comfortable on the peak I am right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, well, uh, the peaks are limitations, right? And we have a limitation in the industry that we have here. So I will climb to the highest peak that I can here, and then we'll see. Yeah, well, um, not completely on the indie type because I'm working at Miniquip. It's uh, yeah, but um, no, like the um, the contacts exist, and this is another thing that like uh, um, I think maybe it's harder to to start in the industry than to to stay there because because once you're there, like contacts appear, you start uh, going to stuff, you start meeting people. Like it's it's maybe easier to like to 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 go somewhere else. But uh, I see like uh, working abroad or something like that, something that I see in my future, but not, not exactly right now. Yeah, sure. I was going to say that, like, I know you. You're yep. a very outgoing guy, you know? So, so I, I imagine that when you went to like your first dev meet, it probably wasn't that hard, like to strike a conversation with someone, but it might not be like that for everyone. Like there's some people yep. that are you know, more introvert, that it's the, there's a difficulty to talk to another person. So for the, for those type of people, what would be like your your tips? Yeah. To so get, like to strike a conversation with someone like they never met in their life. Of course. Like um, the the thing is that um, I am outgoing on those situations. Like I love being alone. I love like not talking to anybody. Like uh, yeah. Like I don't play multiplayer games online because I don't. I, I'm like playing games. Like don't talk with me. Like it's more like in the, this kind of thing. Like, but but um, it comes uh, with training as uh, every, everything else you need to like uh, it's hard to to put yourself out there especially if you are an introvert but you have to start little by little like what what i did in my in my first game dev meet i didn't went alone I, I brought two friends i think it's a good tip too i bought two friends that well 
they like video games they didn't want to be a game developer so i i felt kind of safe if i if i have no one to talk to at least i have these people i'm not completely lost i will try some games i'll go home like yeah so um, so I, th I think there's uh, you, this this you, this is really uh, like personal but i think like bringing some friends can help Yeah, um, well, it kind of depends. The, the thing about Miniclip is that it, it is a big company. So we are 250 people here. But uh, my team right now, uh, it's two client developers, one server guy and one QA. So and I'm I'm half of the client developers. So it feels uh, then you have like this big machine around, of course, and you always feel like there, there's someone else, right? Because it, we, outside the team. But but you all but you have this uh, thing of like uh, working in a small team that at least the the relationships between uh, between uh, the developers you can uh, you can manage, yeah. But it's um, but it's also like different. I I, st I stayed like uh, two and a half years basically like uh, uh, in Agario, and uh, and then I went for like uh, four or five months to to help out in uh, in Minimalicia because they wanted to like to push some some update fast, but. Um, but there's a lot of people there that uh, that they just circulate around uh, around projects, which is also a nice thing because you don't have this thing of like being stuck in the same place. It really depends, and uh, and uh, and at Miniclip, if you talk with your manager, you can always like achieve something else. And it's also um, possible to even change areas. Like I'm tired of programming. I want to be a game designer. You can do it. Someone else. Yeah. Yeah, and and I totally get you. But but the thing is that um, wh when I say people are alone, I don't say properly that they are sad. Um, and, I, and I wasn't saying that they are alone. They are saying that they are lost. And, um, and and I believe that we are always lost because we are always trying to find our way, or at least the best way. Like, okay, you have this way. This way is not bad, but I'm kind of lost because maybe there's something else. And it's and I think it's more in this way. Some people are more lost than others, and I think the ones who are less lost, less lost will always help the ones who are more lost. And I think it's more in, more in this way. What? Well, I don't know if you put, if you put uh, ten uh, ten depressed. Uh, People in one room, maybe they will get more depressed. I don't know how it works, but uh, it's an experiment that we should try. <laughs> Someone else? Yeah, I think um, especially uh, especially for uh, when you are trying to join a company like uh, like uh, Miniclip or like uh, some bigger company, you are um, there is um, there is a, a, a big um, focus on specialization. So I am a software developer. I'm not doing art there. Like I'm not doing game design. There's no one there like doing game design and programming. Um, so so at the point. Um, this was also the the thing that I didn't mention, but maybe I should. Like when I say that I, I know how to program and I like video games, so I can be a video game programmer. Uh, before this, I uh, I was uh, even considering I will finish my studies, but I won't program. I'll be like project manager or something like that. And um, and um, what I saw was like I really want to work in this kind of projects, video games, and I have this skill that I, that I can offer to them. So I try to learn as much uh, as possible in the skill that I already had. It's more in this way, and of course, like uh, always, a little bit of game design. So I was able like to create my my own things and like with a little bit of basis. But yeah, so I focus more more on programming, learning engines because I didn't know anything, and um, and game design.
seemed like a guy who has two feet three planted on four. Have you ever felt, and in case you did, have you dealt with imposter syndrome? Yeah, I feel imposter syndrome every day. I feel like I shouldn't be giving a talk to a room full of people. It's uh, um, It helps to hear other people telling you that you are good at something. Because sometimes coming, uh, you, you, it's something that you just need to overcome, right? Um, but, but when you get like this, uh, like these moments where you can ask feedback from from other people or or uh, usually like in companies you have like these times that the people will give you feedback or something and when you and uh, when you hear feedback from others saying like ah you are good at this you are good at that like we we reckon value that it tackles the imposter syndrome a little bit uh, down but i at least for me i still didn't overcome i didn't overcome completely and i think it's um i think it's one of the hardest things and that uh, it strikes everybody, but I think it strikes a lot of people in our industry. And uh, I got a lot of imposter syndrome. Like when I when I go down there and I see like the the nominees for the Nordic uh, Nordic Games, and like well, the, it's students, and I don't know how to do that. And it's like yeah, this this happens every day. Someone else? Okay. So thank you very much, guys. Let's go for lunch. <laughs>